Back again, another Saturday, the champ is here. That's right, the Commish Radio Show, the best radio show from Como to the Congo. And if you're in Fort Worth, you know where, well, you should know where Como's at. Well, you know where it's at. But if you're part of the world, which clearly you are because you're listening to us on FBRN.us, you should know where the Congo's at. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. This show is loved by many, hated by few, respected by all, second to none, second to none. And that's why we're here today for this abbreviated version of the Commish Radio Show. And we're going to do an abbreviated version because during this first 30 minutes, we're going to be talking about massacres in the United States. And then during the second portion of it, which we will have Michael J. Todd, Michael G. Todd, I'm sorry, Michael G. Todd of, uh, well, the... Todd Law Firm, we will be talking about, uh, well, again, massacres. We're going we're gonna to drop some knowledge with you on that. So we uh, like to send a special shout out to those people who have been listening uh, to us on the earlier uh, program. We've been doing CD30. We will be, uh, well, we will be uh, continuing that dialogue with you by having other conversations. I will be on KERA TV radio on Monday, Monday morning, talking about the Congressional District 30 race. And also you can, well, if you're not up and ready to listen to me early Monday morning, you can go ahead and look at us on KERA online. So that being said, we got Gabe. Gabe is just thrown in a lion's den right now because I'm an old lion. I may not have any teeth, as we used to say back in the day, but we still have a bite. And what does have a bite right now is what's going on in these United States of America. The only thing united about these United States is the name. Nothing else is united. You know, we are talking to you about uh, massacres this day, and uh, we would like to uh, extend our condolences uh, to the nation, the nation, because we are like Frankie Beverly, we're one in all this together. We live in a society today in which uh, we cannot do simple things that uh, we used to take for granted. I guess, uh, I suppose we never were able to take for granted the things that we do today. Well, among those things are uh, going shopping at a grocery store. You go shopping at a grocery store, you, you get killed. Perhaps it's praying. You know, we used to think that the four little girls in, in Alabama, they, uh, they died, and, well, that happened, and we said, well, that'll never happen again, and then we had, we had the uh, massacre in Charleston. You know, we have been going through this all our lives, and it doesn't seem like anything's going to change. Historically speaking, this has always been the case. Massacres have always occurred in, in the United States because the black lives simply are not valued. We've had to put a hashtag behind it by saying Black Lives Matter, hashtag Black Lives Matter. And when we did that, some people got upset. They got upset because of a simple hashtag. We live in a society today in which you put a simple hashtag on something and a lot of America gets upset over a hashtag. Nobody rioted. Nobody talked about overthrowing the government, but we put a hashtag on it and people say all lives matter, diminishing our blackness because they wanted to feel good. Well, I don't feel good today. I don't feel good today because I know that I live in a society in which my life is not valued. And historically speaking, that's been the case. You know, I think about the things that have occurred in these United States. I think about the first recorded acts of uh, massacres that happened. They called them at that particular time, they called them race riots. But they weren't race riots, they were massacres. They have occurred all over the United States. I think Gabe has a couple of them uh, keyed up and queued up, shall I say. And we're going to show you a couple of them. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to hear them uh, as well as what we talk about. But the first 
riot, a massacre, shall I say, occurred in 1863. And yeah, that's right, I'm a, I'm a historian. I have this degree in history, a master's degree in this thing. So that's the reason why I want to talk about it. I got to get back some of my money, you know? So I want you to share in some of that. And you don't have to, you don't have to pay for it. But in case you want to pay for it, up above me, there's a, there's a scroller that's coming around, uh, coming around to tell you you can cash out, Gray Vision 2020, if you like. But this is the most important thing we get out of this. In 1863, the first riots occurred, ironically, in New York City, in New York. And this is where the story ends. It ends in Buffalo, New York. We used to think about things happening down south in Mississippi and Alabama, and yeah, Texas as well. Slocum, Texas, they had uh, massacres in East Texas in which the whole town was cleared out. 300 African Americans, black people, Negroes, whatever we called ourselves at that time, people who had skin like mines were killed. But 1863, they had that to happen in New York City. And then after the Civil War had occurred, and things got a little better for us. We received our freedom, and we were able to reconstruct the government. Uh, but what we were not able to do was deconstruct white supremacy. And what occurred in Wilmington, North Carolina, post-reconstruction, was a part of ethnic cleansing. Gabe, yes, I think you got that clip. Do you have that clip? Yes, let's, let's play that clip right now while we're uh, looking for the clip. I just want to set the tune. And let's set the tune for it, because this is a music that uh, has been played over and over and over again. It's about black people overcoming, making strides toward freedom, and then when the strides toward freedom are met, there is white backlash. Gabe, let's roll. This past summer, the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa race riots was widely observed and discussed. Remembrances of Black Wall Street echoed across social media as we looked back at one of the nation's most violent racial attacks. But a much less known tragedy mirrors what happened in Oklahoma. Before Tulsa, there was Wilmington. In the late 1800s, Wilmington was the largest city in North Carolina. Its population was also majority black, a rarity in post-Civil War the, uh, South. Not only were blacks present in large numbers, they enjoyed an unusual level of prosperity for the time. That's this extended to about. business and education and politics. On this day, in 1898, in reaction to the degree of black influence in local government, a mob of white supremacists unleashed terror on the city. Around 2,000 men stormed the city and set fire to homes yep, and businesses. People are texting me saying Lost in the flames was the daily record of black-owned newspaper, okay, which was a beacon for the city's black residents. Now. Historians estimate no the mob killed anywhere from 60 to 250 people. Many black residents hid for days in swamps. And around 1,400 black people that fled Wilmington. All right. In the ashes of that day, black, the duly elected mayor me and a number of city council members were Cut forced to relent. All right, we're back again. And what we had was a blackout. That's right, a blackout. So what we'll go ahead and do, with Facebook's tripping, well, that's been happening all morning long, it seems like. So what I'm going to do is just basically talk about what had occurred in Wilmington, North Carolina. What had occurred was that uh, Wilmington, North Carolina was the, uh, the largest city in North Carolina uh, that uh, had a large amount of black people. It was like uh, Atlanta, Georgia is today. You know, people just flocked to North Carolina. And then as a result of that, they achieved an amount of uh, black economics, pride, and government. Uh, so what occurred then was the overthrow of the elected government in North Carolina. And as a result of that, black people were killed. They estimated about 600 black people were killed in Wilmington, North Carolina. Massacres, if you will. So then we go to Slocum, Texas. Slocum, Texas, uh, was located in East Texas. Slocum, Texas, located in East Texas. And what occurred in Slocum, Texas, which happened around about the time that uh, uh, we uh, had the uh, riot, if you will, massacre in Tulsa, they, we had the same thing going on in Slocum, Texas. The Slocum, Texas massacre had occurred, and as a result of that, 
approximately 300 African Americans had, uh, look at this, 300 African Americans were uh, killed as well. So now when we end up having that, we see a pattern, if you will, of massacres that have occurred in these United States. You know, we're going to be talking with legal standpoint with Michael G. Todd, and we will be, we will be uh, reiterating some of those things. So we're going to go and play a couple of drops right quick, and then we'll come back. We'll uh, state the case, if you will. He's a lawyer. He knows how to do this thing better than I. But what we'll go ahead and do, we will uh, uh, state the case of the historical nature of massacres that have occurred in these United States, and then where do we go from here? Gabe, let's go ahead. Hi, my name is Gail Todd with Townview Realtors. If you find yourself in the market to buy, sell, lease, or maybe you want you to do that and I, I, I see in the background I have uh, he didn't did both both you got them on screen man that's good that's good so right there on screen we have our next guest coming up and that's Michael G Todd so we have him there. I got to put that G in there because when it's uh, J, man. J, man, Michael J yeah J. you keep changing your name no nah. you trying to make me Fred Sam nah man that's what it is <laughs> well Michael J Todd yeah, G. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about massacres in a minute. But he's keying up right now as an attorney, so you know what he's doing. He's keying up because he has this information and everything. People are tuned in right now laughing, but what is not a laughing matter is the massacres that have occurred in these United States. Just briefly talking about some of those, we talked about the Slocum massacre that occurred in 1910. We, everyone knows clearly uh, what happened in Tulsa, the Tulsa riots. Uh, you name a city, or name a state rather, uh, that has a large black population and you, you'll run across some type of massacre or some type of riot that has occurred against uh, African Americans. So I want to go ahead and uh, articulate and drop the knowledge on two more that happened in recent history because people have been texting me saying, man, why are you bringing up this old stuff? You know, that's good that you know history. But I'm saying we are living in historical times right now because we had the 
the uh, uh, we had the massacre that occurred obviously in in uh, Buffalo this week. The people were now referring to as the Buffalo massacre, but before that, we had the Charleston massacre uh, as well. So when you have those two massacres that have occurred, what we're seeing now is a trend toward black people not feeling safe. Black people not feeling safe. And I can tell you right now, when it comes to black people not feeling safe, well, you shouldn't feel safe. Because in these unprecedented times, which have never been so unprecedented, what has happened is that we are being targeted. Yes, we are being targeted. And this is still a reflection upon what occurred, and I'll say this again, and I'll say it until the, as we say down in Texas, till the last dog comes home. I will say this, that this is a reflection of what occurred in January of 2009. In January of 2009, in which President Barack Hussein Obama was inaugurated as President of the United States. And now we get a, 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 we get a situation in which black people have never felt secure in their homes, whether or not it's uh, being a Harvard professor like Professor Gates, Dr. Gates, who was at his home and was arrested in his own living room for breaking into his own house, or uh, Botham John, who was killed while eating ice cream in his own house. Check it out, in your own house. You don't feel secure. You go shopping, you don't feel secure. And the troubling thing about this, the troubling thing about this is that when I was a young man attending Carter High School, uh, one of the things we used to always say, it was 1980, and we would say that these things were going to be wiped out because we are going to be in charge, and all of the old races won't be in charge, and that'll be the end of that. Well, obviously, that's not the case, because we're in charge now, so to speak. And these things are being committed by young European Americans uh, between the ages of 18 and 24. Yeah. Young boys that never knew anything about this stuff, about saying bad words that we can't say no more. Never knew anything about busing. Martin Luther King's birthday was always a holiday. But now, they're shooting people like me. Yep, me. They're shooting people like me because, well, I'm here. And that's the reason why we're here on the Commission Radio Show, to drop this knowledge so you'll understand what's going on right now. There's a target, a target on our back. And that's what's going on. Do you feel secure? Can you feel secure? It doesn't matter who's in the White House, whether or not Joseph Biden in the White House, Donald Trump in the White House, or Barack Obama in the White House. We are not secure. Well, that's what it is right now. We're not secure. And that's the reason why I wanted to just go ahead and drop this information on you, because we need to be secure. So thank you for tuning in and listening to the Commish Radio Show. We want you to follow us on all of the following platforms, Instagram and Twitter, EdGray1906. Follow us on uh, the other companion uh, uh, Facebook pages as well. And join us the Ed Gray political page where we put all of our political information out. But most of all, we want you to share this because, well, we have ran a couple of hiccups, but we want to make sure that people get the knowledge that's going on right here in these United States. All right, let's play a couple of drops and we're out. And we'll cut the show. See you guys back in a few. This is John Cruzel, your Democratic candidate for district attorney for Dallas County.